Hey folks, Jonathan here. I uh, wanted to go ahead and do another video on this engine, and this will be part two. Uh, don't think we're going to do any work on it. I might end up doing some drilling later and add to the video, but we'll see how that goes. But uh, the main thing is I want to explain to everybody what we're doing here because I didn't put it in the last video, and this is going to be a series of videos again. The last one will be part one. We'll make this part two, and then we'll we'll move on with it. And that way, when, later on when it's in a playlist, if somebody watches it, they'll understand what's going on, and uh, they won't, because, you know, the, the random information I gave on this is in another video. So anyway, let me uh, go through this and tell everybody what the plan is and what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. And, well, plans can change sometimes, too, but how we're going to try to do it. Okay, what we got here, this is the same exact case as the other engine. Uh, just casted more of them using the same foundry pattern and I think we can use this on quite a few different setups and the only other setup I want to go ahead and say that I'm looking for and maybe somebody will run into one uh, is a Gravely uh, cylinder and I want a T-head cylinder off of a Gravely Model L uh, walk behind tractor and what these are is a, it's a flathead engine uh, but they call it a T-head because one valve is on one side and one valve is on the other side so they're opposite of each other and I'm going to build the head because the fins actually run the wrong way for a motorcycle. So I'll cast a head, but I'm trying to find a cylinder, uh, 7.6 horsepower, I think they are, 7.5 horsepower or something. Uh, and then I think they made a size smaller. So if anybody runs along one of them cylinders, I've seen a couple on uh, eBay, but usually the, they, the fins are broke real bad. And the last one I seen had a tap broke off in it. And, they were still wanting, you know, more money than I, I would wa want to give for it. And uh, so anyway, that's where we're at on that. But uh, this one here, okay, we're using another Yamaha 250 crankshaft, which is right here. This crankshaft's a little different, and it's a 1986 model instead of a 2001. So we're going with a 4 millimeter shorter stroke. Uh, threads here instead of a bolt. And like I said, I bought this cheap. Bearing's good on the big end of the crank. No problem there, so I don't need to take it apart. But what they had done is somebody had hammered on the end and messed the threads up. And, uh, the you know, the end of the crank itself. So not a problem. We can do whatever. We're probably just going to end up breaking it anyway. So, uh, you know, maybe I'll put another bolt on it. But we'll figure that out as we go. Uh, do have to get the bearings and seals. I don't have any. Uh, that's going to be... One thing, the other thing I've got to get is another timing gear for the crankshaft. That'll be the two things to get for this, and uh, I don't think we're going to need much of anything else. Uh, found some more bolts for the case, and like I said, we've got this cylinder. I'm going to use the original piston out of this cylinder, which is a, a big three-ring piston. I've got It's got a good set of rings. This is a three-inch bore, so we're going with a quarter-inch bigger bore. We'll have to... Uh, I've got the clips for this pin. We'll have to make a bushing and to fit this piston. And let me see. Pocket valve. Uh, I explained it before. I'll explain it again. A pocket valve engine is a F head engine. F head being intake on top, exhaust on bottom. Uh, but when it's a pocket valve, they're, they're set over to the side. And uh, your intake's on the top, and I'll show you that here in a minute. Your exhaust is down here, and your intake is actually an atmospheric valve, so you don't uh, you don't have to have a cam lobe of any kind. When the piston comes down on the intake stroke, it sucks the valve open, and that in turn turns or you know pulls the fuel air mixture in from the carburetor through the carburetor and into the engine. And uh, so that's one thing you don't need. This particular engine has a half inch pipe plug thread because this cylinder is around a 19 I want to say it's a 1920 1921 model somewhere through there uh, and this pin in here is not broke it's made that way I wish it was out for, you know but uh, really don't matter and putting it on here where we're going to put it the actual I think the pins are going to be a little bit slanted not exactly straight, but that really don't matter. Not a big deal there. And uh, 
let me see we'll have to deal with the exhaust coming out the side and coming quick and then our intake will probably bring it around and maybe set our carburetor here we're going to use an updraft on this one for sure it'll be you know in this area here and like I said we've got the one from Richard and we've got uh, we've got one that uh, oh, I've had and you know a couple others so we'll uh, we'll figure it out as we go and uh, to give you a size comparison in the piston compared to the one we used on the last engine as you can see it's a little bit bigger and uh, the crazy thing is is uh, because this is a four millimeter shorter stroke we're going to have a short uh, smaller uh, cubic centimeter cc and smaller cubic inch but I mean it's just a little bit smaller engine um, I don't remember what it was instead of 280 maybe it's 250 260 something like that but it you know, I would have to do the calculations again but uh, no big deal we're not worried about that uh, let me see right, on the intake here's what we've got springs bad it's just you know flopping uh, as you can see we're broke here now this has to seal good I do have that piece but I probably will make a new piece and that's pretty simple to turn out and we can either run slots like this or we can just drill holes around it like a sort of like a revolver barrel a revolver not barrel but the revolver on a pistol and uh, we don't have to use this valve we can you know shorten up a regular valve and use it or you know anything we want to do it's you know pretty much open and simple and uh, as long as we you know go around with the, about the same size valve we'll be fine and uh, so this needs a lot of work and this just goes down under our intake here it's pretty simple the way that it works and like I would said before this one had a slot here and a hole or a place for a possibly a, uh, a rocker arm so this could have run either way but we're gonna run it atmospheric just because I want to and that's the way the older ones were so this just slides in is all it does and uh, presses down in and then like I said when it uh, when the piston goes down it just pulls it down and when it comes back up for compression it holds itself up and uh, you know part of your combustion chamber is actually right in here and then you know all the way across and uh, we'll get the I've got the engine that just came off of and you know the block had been it's kind of a weird setup so the blocks not really usable and so we'll uh, we'll be able to do some measuring on uh, wrist pin height you know our deck height from here to the top of the wrist pin what we need uh, you know if we're going to have to machine down and set the cylinder down in or if we're going to have to you know even build a, a spacer to go under it to hold it up uh, we can go either way just you know whatever we got to do to get our compression right you know that's the important part and I think everything else will be fine uh, you know just a cheap quick build there's no uh, there's not much to it we're going to run a single cam I've got an idea on this one now this is uh this is our bad cam okay this one's the one with the teeth fixed on it our other one's the one with the lobe bad so we'll we'll fix we'll probably fix the other one or we may run this one I don't know but anyway you know we got our crank coming crank coming through here and of course right there's our, our issue with that but I, you know like I said all that's gonna be missing so we'll know for sure if it's gonna be right when we machine it but I believe it is but uh, our cam was actually gonna sit on this side I think I'm gonna build something come off the bottom of the lobe and pivot over here and then actually push up on a push rod here and you know lifter whatever you want to call it I guess a lifter and actually push our valve open and the reason I'm going to do that I need to increase the lift and I'll get the I can figure what the lift is off the other engine also but I do know it's more than the what was it uh oh, I can't remember how many 108 thousandths or whatever on this whatever it was we've got to go more I know that for sure so uh, you know there's there's different ways to do it we could uh, you know mount, we could even mount it center if we wanted and come out pivot off of this side come to the top I mean you know there's just so many different ways of doing it you know you, you about take your choice on that and uh, so we'll, we'll figure out how we're gonna do it however it's gonna be easiest and, and you know we'll use a you know a leverage of some kind to change our lift to, to be able to do it anyway that's the plan and uh, I do have two cylinders that uh, 
that I showed before on the uh, Cushman. I think I'll pull them cylinders off and save them, put them to the side. Uh, may build another case for a V-twin and build a V-twin engine later. And um, that way, you, you know, you'll be able to see how the cams are set up in a V-twin. And, you know, it's really, you know, not much different than what we're doing here. Uh, you just twice as much work. Uh, anyway, all right. I'm, uh, I may drill this and bolt it later on, but I, uh, I'm going to get back to work on the rollback since uh, the sun's still shining. All right. Okay, folks. Uh, I went ahead. Uh, it rained me out. I worked on the truck as much as I could, and then it rained me out. So coming here for the evening anyway, and uh, I went ahead and drilled all the holes. And as you can see, my bolts are too long, but what I did, I ran a die down them and, and uh, made them where I could use them. And then uh, I think I had one that was the right length, and there's one that's a little bit too long, or a little bit longer. Anyway, I'll go through and cut these off. And I did that on the other one, too, a couple of the bolts I had to cut off. But, uh, but anyway, I hope everybody understands the pocket valve now. And, you know, a lot of motorcycles use this, Harley, I think, in the end. And, uh, and I know I've had a lot of comments about my frogs in the background and uh, I don't know how anybody could live without having that noise and uh, well as you can see he's just sitting there looking at me we've got an agreement he don't uh, he don't mess with me and I don't eat him I got four or five squirrels living in the shop it started out there was one and I said well as soon as he or if she has the babies and gets out and leaves, I'll, you know, be done with it. And it just sort of multiplied, and now they won't, uh, you know, I need to evict them, I guess. But uh, they don't bother me. All right, anyway, I hope you understand the pocket valve, and uh, we'll uh, go ahead and get the bearings ordered and stuff for this. And, and uh, it, you know, it might be a week or so, and we'll... Uh, See if we can do the machining on it and go ahead and get everything straightened out how we need it. So, appreciate everybody watching, and until uh, next time, bye.